space. To penetrate it, man must have guidance. Guidance to be found in the power of the gyroscope. This is the story of the unlocking of the guiding power and of the man who unlocked it. In the 1880s, Elmer Sperry attended Cornell University, an early center of the science of electricity. Rapidly absorbing electrical principles, he developed a new carbon arc light and was soon making his reputation in other practical applications of the science. An established success at the age of 50, Sperry turned his inquiring mind to finding an engineering application for the gyroscope. He reasoned that the gyro's stubborn resistance to change, in effect its physical memory, could be applied in any field requiring guidance. In 1910, a small company was formed to develop a gyro compass not affected by the magnetic influences found in ships built of steel. Installed aboard USS Delaware, this first gyro compass was followed by better models on later fighting ships. The battering surge of the world's oceans had from all time past presented seafaring men with the problem of stabilization. The Navy was particularly interested in stability to improve gunfire control. To attain stability, Sperry developed the gyro stabilizer. It achieved the desired result of calming the wild sea. Sperry now turned to other fields in which these applications might be used. Though man had flown successfully, early aircraft development was a matter of much trial and much error. The air industry had reached a point at which plane and pilot had a better than average chance of taking off, flying for a fairly sustained period, and landing with reasonable safety. When young Lawrence Sperry demonstrated his father's invention that before long would permit an aircraft to fly itself. Even then, both roll and pitch were steadied by small gyros working flight controls. This helped speed air development, which was just commencing, when it was suddenly interrupted. U-boat wolf packs provoked a determined American response. And a deadly surprise. Whole batteries could combine firepower on a target pinpointed by gyros. All that these young pilots demanded of a plane was more speed and maneuverability. The exciting age of pioneering dawned over America. Some new devices built by Sperry Gyroscope permitted further experiments by early aviators. Combining these, Sperry engineers created the world's first guided missile. This aerial torpedo originated for the Navy in 1915. And after scores of successful shots, the idea was continued by the Army in the 1919 Bug Project. These were not easy developments. The pioneering spirit of try and try again prevailed. By pooling the experience of both services with much hesitation and some buffeting, man continued on his way to space. Peacetime applications of new gyro developments followed in rapid succession. 
The first transatlantic flight by the NC-4 was only possible after a new gyro drift meter sharpened navigation to stretch precious fuel across the ocean. For those who still crossed the sea in ships, Sperry creative teams produced new ship's instruments, then added an automatic steersman capable of holding the biggest vessel to its course with unheard of accuracy. The course of American life, on the other hand, took a number of erratic zigzags. Lawrence Sperry continued to popularize the airplane. He demonstrated the ease with which a plane could take off and land. At times, his efforts to prove the safety and convenience of aircraft had an impact on American aviation, like the Manassa Maulers on American sports. Early efforts to deliver the mail by air were accelerated by the blind takeoff and landing of Lieutenant Jimmy Doolittle, a feat made possible by the gyro-studied artificial horizon and the directional gyro. The years passed, the mighty babe went round the bases, and Wiley Post went solo round the world. Post's flight dramatically focused attention upon the automatic pilot, a device which enabled pioneer airlines to fly night and day through rain, fog, and cloud. But a new cloud was descending upon Europe. The pirate fight has right in guys. The American production team geared up to aid its embattled former ally. Sperry was part of the team. Searchlights, in combination with sound locators and associated gun directors, helped to bark back London's blazing defiance. On the other side of the globe, a day that shall live in infamy struck the American people like a thunderbolt. The United States fought back with all the force at its command. Aided by advanced gun sites and bomb sites and by devices heretofore unheard of devices with strange names. Radar, Klystron, Loran, Sonar. Sperry workers took justifiable pride in their share of the final victory. But all too soon came the call for even newer versions of weapon systems. The MIT Sperry radar gun sight gave our pilots a 13 to 1 kill ratio in Korea. Equally effective on the ground was the automatic radar ranging and aiming of the sky sweeper. And the ability of the MPQ-10 mortar locator to detect the enemy's ground position by reverse tracking his mortar shells. During this period, Sperry added a new deterrent value to our strategic bombers, an entirely new concept for semi-automatic aircraft navigation and blind bombing. We're on autopilot. Roger. I have the target on radar. The PDI is centered. You have second station. Roger. On a bombing mission, the K system and its complex computers guides the aircraft to its target and calculates the bomb path with deadly accuracy. Sperry Sparrow. The first combat-ready, air-to-air guided missile stubbornly rides a radar track to the kill.
guidance systems accurately direct atomic submarines to any point in the world's oceans, from which they can fire Polaris with launching data supplied by Sperry computers and inertial controls. Advanced radars in combination with improved guidance systems direct Talos and Terrier for the Navy, while for the Army, complete new Sargent missile systems are ready with fast-moving launchers and fire controls. In the field, the long-range search radar of the Air Force stands listening, ready to alert the nation's defenses. The B-58 Hustler's missile-type inertial gyro controls have earned it the name, the missile with men in it. Such advances already benefit our peacetime lives, aboard the newest jetliners, or on gyro-stabilized ships. Even for weekending off Long Island, electronic safeguards bring new safety. Research continues. In production is the metal gyro floating in liquid. In the development stage is the all-fluid gyro. And in design, a gyro composed of frictionless electrons spinning in a magnetic field. For tomorrow, the first mock-up of a space trip control console, which will help man reach out of his world. A complex system of computing devices which will plot his entire flight, direct him along his required course, and monitor itself through all stages of the journey. Man is ready. He stands at the threshold of space. When he penetrates it, he will have guidance.